Okay, well we wanted to take a look at one final simple geometrical object um, in, in a little bit of detail, and this is the um, vertical cylinder. We've mentioned it a couple times. And this anomaly is a little bit more complex to describe uh, analytically. You know, if we pull, it's difficult to pull z out of this equation as, as we did before. Uh, however, we can, we can we can work with uh, this expression and undertake some similar analysis. Uh, you can take a look at Berger, Sheehan, and Jones' presentation, or Telford, uh, Geltarf, Sheriff, and Keyes. Uh, several texts will have this relationship in there. This is basically a relationship for a, a vertical rod. That's uh, where L is the length of the rod. And the length of the rod is usually considered to be, in this formulation here, is considered to be much greater than the uh, depth to the top of the rod, which Z represents the depth to the top of the rod. So for L much larger than Z, this, this reduces to um, uh, G times the cross-sectional area, pi R squared times rho, or delta rho, over Z, which is the depth to the top of the rod or vertical cylinder. So we can see that the anomaly is symmetrical in shape, and uh, so we should be able to do the same sorts of analysis that, that we have with other anomalies. And uh, if we, you know, we, we plug that formula into um, Excel, for example, and uh, calculate an anomaly for an object, and then we can derive these uh, distances. It, it's easier actually to do it this way. Uh, for the value of x over z where the anomaly drops to 3 quarters, 1 half, 1 quarter, 0 0.73, 1.29, 1, 2.25. And remember the depth in index multipliers that we multiply times the values of x at these positions. Uh, these depth index multipliers then give us the depth to the anomaly source. So the next thing that we do is we estimate z, and we'd estimate the depth z for this particular anomaly. Uh, you, you mark off the positions uh, for x three quarters, two thirds, one half, one third, one quarter, and you get these values, these diagnostic positions. The anomaly drops off to one quarter of its maximum value, a distance of 22.5, approximately a distance of 22.5 uh, meters from the maximum, uh, the location of the maximum. Uh, we use the multipliers, and then we estimate z. And we can see that z in this case is about 10 meters, with plus or minus uh, 0 0.1. Uh, error in the estimate. So, so this you know follows the this analysis follows the same um, pattern, the same approach that we've used to evaluate the anomalies associated with a sphere, a horizontal cylinder. And now we have the vertical cylinder. Now, the vertical cylinder falls off less rapidly than the horizontal cylinder, and and you know this this is for a profile which crosses directly over the point directly above the uh, uh, vertical cylinder. And of course we do have mass then which is extending down a significant distance uh, beneath the surface. So that produces a rather uh, shallower, um, <clears throat> uh, smaller gradient in the drop-off than we see for the horizontal cylinder or for the sphere. So these anomalies are distinguishable, um, you know, just just by looking at uh, their relative drop-off rates, in a sense. Uh, but normally we go in there and we do we look at the uh, diagnostic positions, calculate depths, assuming a sphere or a vertical cylinder or a horizontal cylinder or a vertical cylinder. And uh, we usually have noise in the data, so we come up with um, answers which would yield estimates of z, and there would be a certain error in the estimate of z, and we'd pick the object which, for which the estimates of z have the smallest uh, range or standard deviation in uh, estimated value.
So a couple additional objects. This would be for actually a sheet. It's not well represented here, but we're kind of assume, assuming that this um, the length of this uh, sheet is very large uh, compared to the width. So we, you know, we might consider it to be infinite, uh, to at least 10 times the width. And we have uh, depths z1 to the top and z2 to the bottom. Uh, and we get this logarithmic expression for g max. And uh, again, we can go in there and calculate the um, depth index multipliers for the different diagnostic positions. Uh, this anomaly is also going to be a, sym a symmetrical bell-shaped type feature, and we would be able to differentiate it. Uh, it's you know between it's actually going to fall off more gradually than the other two anomalies. So uh, I haven't included a comparison here, but uh, just wanted to uh, yeah that might be something that you could do. Put these anomalies into a spreadsheet and go through your own comparisons uh, to see how they. Uh, fall off. We, we can come up with ex, you know, abbreviated expressions when we're mixing units as we did before, in this case for meters and feet. And um, we have, um, in this case, these um, uh, multipliers have been calculated assuming that Z2 is 10 times Z1. And that W, the width is small with respect to Z1 and small with respect to the to the length, which we're, we're pretty much assuming is infinite. It, there's not really a length term in here. Uh, another anomaly, another simple geometrical representation that you'll run into is one for the half plate. Uh, this would be something that you could use to model a fault edge. And it takes this form g 2g rho t times pi over 2 plus the inverse tangent of x over z. And, um, that anomaly, when plotted up, looks like this. And we can see that the anomaly drops to one half of its maximum value right over the edge of the fault or the offset or the glacial valley or whatever it is that you're using this equation to represent. Uh, uh, so that tells you that, well, there's an edge effect. Uh, as we get closer, to the edge. Uh, as we go beyond the edge, the value gradually rises up to some maximum. In this case, since we have a negative density contrast, that maximum is going to be zero. Uh, the minimum is going to be, well, it would be, this is g1 half, so it would be 2 times 6.35 milligauss or uh, minus 12.7 milligauss, uh, way out here somewhere. So, so that would be the uh, minimum value, and um, uh, this would be the depth to the center of the uh, plate, in this case, which is buried beneath the surface. So uh, another useful, simple geometrical object. And uh, next time, we're going to take a quick look at some computer modeling and uh, uh, just give you, well, we'll, we'll, we'll challenge your uh, interpretation skills with uh, uh, some um, uh, some simple models and uh, see you next time